What's an optical engineer? Well, optics is anything having to do with vision and light. Anything that uses light or lenses, lasers or mirrors, that's optics. And engineers? Well, engineers make stuff. They turn ideas into reality. They're inventors and problem solvers. They create the things that make our lives easier and help us explore the unknown. Optical engineers design all kinds of things we use every day, from remote controls to CD players, cell phones, barcode scanners, even laser eye surgery. You know, where they change the shape of your eyes so that you don't have to wear glasses anymore. All of these technologies were created by optical engineers. So that's cool and all, but what does it mean? It means that we can bend light and bounce it. We can control it and make it do some amazing things. You've heard of the Hubble telescope. Because of Hubble, we can look into the outer reaches of our galaxy and see things we've never seen before. But now, work is underway at Northrop Grumman Space Technology, where the James Webb Space Telescope is being built. Designed to make the Hubble look like a baby brother, this space-going wonder will use a lightweight, light-catching mirror much larger in size, over 21 feet in diameter. Scientists hope the JWST will help answer questions about dark matter and even solve the riddle of the Big Bang itself. JWST is just the start of the rest of the future of astronomy, and at the heart is advanced optical technology. You could be the one to make it possible for human beings to see back to the very beginning of the universe. Attention all you Harry Potter fans. Invisibility shields may not be science fiction for much longer. The theoretical breakthrough is made possible by something called metamaterials. The man-made materials are embedded with tiny or nano-sized metal wires and loops. These structures bend different types of electromagnetic radiation, like radar, microwaves, or visible light, in ways natural substances can't. In theory, planes, tanks, cars, and even entire buildings could be hidden. Another approach to invisibility is being explored in Japan. They're developing ways to camouflage people and objects by taking a video signal of what's behind them and projecting it in front of them. Both of these approaches show promise. Figuring out the key to unlocking invisibility requires ingenuity and creative thinking. Maybe you're the one who can help make it into a reality. What if doctors could search out and destroy the very first cancer cells before they cause a tumor? What if a broken part of a cell could be removed and replaced with a miniature machine? What if pumps the size of molecules could be implanted to deliver a life-saving medicine exactly when and where they are needed? It may sound unbelievable, but these are the goals of nanomedicine, and we may see them as early as 10 years from now. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, too small to be seen even with a lab microscope. 100 nanometers or less, that's how big biological molecules and structures inside living cells are. Jennifer West, a bioengineer, used nanoshells coated with gold to kill cancer tumors in mice. This method is more accurate, cheaper, faster, free of side effects, and less dangerous than surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation treatment. We know a lot about how intracellular structures work, but scientists haven't been able to answer the questions like, how many, how big, or how fast? These questions must be answered in order to build nanostructures or nanomachines that can operate safely within the body. But once we do, medicine as we know it will be changed forever, allowing us to unlock the mysteries of human illness. You could be the optical engineer that helps to cure cancer. Twenty-five solar trees are currently converting a 186-vehicle parking lot into a 235-kilowatt solar electric generating system. 
It's called a solar grove. It models natural trees by converting sunlight into energy without adding pollution to the atmosphere, providing shade and looking good at the same time. The system is capable of generating 421,000 kilowatt hours per year. That's equal to the electrical needs of 68 typical San Diego homes in a parking lot. But it's only one way in which optical engineers are changing the world with solar power. Engineers all over the world are working hard to solve the mysteries of clean, renewable energy so that our Earth can be healthier and our future can be brighter without all the pollution that usually goes along with artificial light. All of this stuff, it sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it's not. It's the future, and optical engineers are out there right now creating it. They're solving puzzles and helping the world, working by themselves and in teams. Optics has been changing the world forever, <laughs> so I expect it to continue. Uh, if you think of uh, ast astronomy back from ancient times, that's optics. That's looking at the stars and figuring out what they're doing. If you look at microscopy, and uh, the first microscopes, you know, in, in the 1400s or 1500s, this was, this is uh, optics, and it cured diseases. So, what I like most about what I do, um, the photonics industry in a whole, um, I think it's interesting when I talk to my friends and like my family about, you know, optics and photonics, especially when I'm like, hey, you know, I work with lasers, I sell lasers, and, you know, a lot of people know what they are, but then when I start talking about the applications and what they can actually do, and my work at JPL when I used to work there, um, I mean I was working on NASA projects. You get to work on telescopes, you get to work on stuff that no one else has ever touched before, cutting edge technology. And that really, you know, like people look at you and go, wow, that's really cool. And you feel cool just doing it and um, it's really rewarding just intrinsically about that kind of stuff. Every day I work with over a million dollars worth of equipment. Every day. I walk in, total control, I'm pressing the switches and the buttons and I'm using really fancy, really high-tech equipment and telling it what to do, essentially, and hoping that it responds kindly. Uh, but I use very cool lasers uh, that have a lot of energy, and that's a powerful feeling, I think, to be able to work with all of that fancy equipment. <laughs> so it's just cool. And I can tell people, yeah, I work with lasers every day. They like that. <laughs> There's a lot of job opportunities for laser technicians. There are job opportunities in different industries. There are job opportunities across the nation. These job opportunities are continuing to grow as the photonics industry as a whole is growing and more applications are using lasers and photonics equipment. This growth of job opportunities is fantastic for anybody looking to get into a local community college, earn a degree quickly, and enter into the workforce to be able to use fascinating equipment and make a good living. The demand for laser technicians is very, very high and it's continuing to grow. I personally had two job offers before graduating as a laser technician. I manage a worldwide team. I have employees in countries in Europe and in Asia and uh, have been working with those people for years and so the opportunity to travel the world and to really get to know and work closely with people in other cultures and other countries is for me the best part I think. I'm an engineering technician here at Melis Creo. Uh, what I get to do, I get to work daily with engineers to help develop and design new laser systems for the biomedical industry and it's really important. I have to make sure that everything I do is to spec because some of the tests that these machines are going to be doing is testing people's blood and for other diagnostic tests like that. There was many uh, job opportunities but I really wanted to find something that I was passionate about. Uh, you know, Whether there's industrial or medical. I really think medical caught my eye because when you're Working with a laser that affects someone's life or helps them get diagnosed sooner, that's where it really makes you happy, makes your job feel worthwhile. Some of the coolest things I do, I can't necessarily always talk about, but um, there's a lot of projects uh, involved in everyday things. For instance, in your cell phones, uh, we do a lot of work with uh, companies that manufacture the lenses in your cell phones. And uh, companies like I, I'm not going to say their names, but the, the big companies that you, exactly what you would expect, they're coming out with projects and things that really are going to revolutionize the world and how you live your daily life. 
and getting to be a part of that is very exciting and it's something, it gets me out of bed in the morning. It's just fun for me to solve problems because it's like a puzzle and when you get to the solution, it just gives you this great feeling, ah, I got it. My motivation, it's, um, it's about when I think how it will uh, change the lives of people tomorrow, the impact it's going to have. So it's like my driving force that keeps me on working, yeah. Compared to people, friends of mine who went into other disciplines, I, am, I feel in much better position both for now and for my future uh, because I did focus on math and science. Actually, engineers are cool. We're the ones who get to play with the big toys, and we're actually the ones who get to design our own toys, and we get to do things with our hands, and we get to shine powerful lasers at things, and we get to burn them, make them explode, and make them work, and we have all the cranks and toys and all the electronics put together with all the shining lights, and we're the ones who put those together. I'm an optical engineer. I'm an optical engineer. I'm an optical engineer. Well, maybe not right now, but I can be, and so can you. Just like in optics, it all starts with imagination. I think it's very important to be creative. And the creative is not hard. Just think differently, <laughs> that's all. Sometimes you don't need a $100,000 instrument to get an experiment going or to get really interesting results. You just need an idea. Engineering doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in a cubicle working on from a computer. You can do a lot of things with engineering. Ask questions. Uh, there's no wrong question about lasers and all that. It does seem intimidating, but once you understand how the fundamentals of a laser works, it's not intimidating at all. And I really think that you'll be interested in trying to find out how light works and how light can be applied to everyday problems that occur all, all across the country. And if you want to transform your world, yeah, if you really want to transform your world, if you really want to come up with something innovative, yeah, you want to. And I believe that should be a dream of, of several young people. You don't just want to do some routine work. You want to do something that would be challenging, that people will sit and look and gaze and understand that, I mean, this is, uh, this is really formidable. So if you want to do such a thing, then I believe that science is the place. Do what you like to do. And if you like it, you'll be good. And if you're good, chances are you'll get a job. I always enjoyed school and it was fun. Um, but I was not a great student until I decided there was something I was really interested in and that happened very late for me. Anybody can do anything they want, that, but that, that they put their mind to it. I really believe that. So. Just start with a little step, ask one question and get the answer and then go to the next step. But you, you can do it as long as you're curious and you're interested and ask questions, you can go anywhere in life, I think. And there are so many people out there that will try to tell you you can't do it or you can't do this or you know maybe you shouldn't even waste your time on that. You didn't get an A in math and science, don't be an engineer. There's a million people telling you you can't do something. but. You just have to believe in yourself. You have to have that little voice that goes, yeah, you can. <laughs> and that makes the difference. Curiosity, interest, and hard working, that, that's what brings you in. It's not, it's not being a genius, it's just 
having an incentive to uh, go and read and, 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 and study. Never be afraid to ask questions, never be afraid to step forward. Being an engineer, being a scientist is the way to change the world. Everyone can be an optical engineer. Don't let anyone tell you you can't, not even yourself. All you need is curiosity, determination, and imagination. And it all starts with math and science classes. Just remember, lots of optical engineers struggled through some of their classes, but they didn't let that stop them. Optics is the future, and we need you to help turn ideas into reality.